Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again so soon. It's especially soon for me because, as usual, something went weird with the recording where I was recording it, and then when I played back the audio, there was a mysterious, like, banging noise. Couldn't tell what it was, but such is my commitment to audio quality for you that I said, let's just re-record the whole thing and maybe I can try to be a little bit less of an idiot <laughs> this particular time. How are you? Did you have a good week? I hope you did. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. I'm doing okay. Tough week, exhausting week, but I made it through. Get to do it again tomorrow. So, yeah, this is the main hangar that we are in, and we could talk about the Incinerator Hawk, but that's not really why we're here. We're here to talk about hangar number four. The ultimate hangar, the big money hangar, big money grip hangar, big bank take little bank hangar. Predator called it the $10,000 hangar. I think it's more like 4500 but I don't want to actually do the math because it might depress me if he's right. And uh, I played some games with this. In fact, I'm going to show you four games, and each and every robot in the hangar gets a little bit of time to play. And I'm going to give you some thoughts about it. First of all, here's the big takeaway. Is it as good as a meta hangar? Would it replace a meta hangar? And uh, no, is the short answer. The robots are better than their original versions, but they're like a current version of their original versions. <laughs> like, they're, they're still hard to play in some cases. Anybody who tells you that, like, the ultimate bots don't take skill obviously doesn't have an ultimate bot. I think that's a recurring theme. It's like the people who can't afford the robots are sure it doesn't take skill to pilot them. That's a coincidence. <laughs> like People who don't have the thing are sure about what it's like to be in the thing. Okay. <laughs> sure, Jan. Um, but in particular, the metabots... Yeah, like the Ares is still an Ares. The invader is still an invader. You still have to make certain choices, especially the Ares, obviously. The one bot I can't really give you a comparison on to its non-ultimate version is the Ao Ming. Because I leveled it, but I never played it. Um, when I came back, I think the Miramitz was the Meta Titan, and I got a Sharanga. First video I ever uploaded to this, whatever you want to call it, or we can call it a channel, but I don't, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, this, uh, you know... I don't have a better word. The first video I uploaded to this channel was a charanga. I was demonstrating how to use phase exile in a way that makes you not an idiot. Because there's a lot of bad phase exiles, I think we all remember. And it was a teammate and a red were contesting the secondary on the carrier. And so I phase exiled the red player just so we could cap it. And then, just we just fought it out regularly. But getting the cap, the sooner you get the cap you know, the more you erode their beacon bar, so there's no reason not to get the cap earlier if you can. That's a time where phase exile is logical. Anyway, this isn't about phase exiles here. Let's look at the build on the pilot. I went for a lot of durability and some regen here. Heavyweight, battler, titan, slayer is good for damage. Defense expert, secondary, so we get some defense points. Mechanic, tough guy, roadhog, generalist. So really increasing its durability. The one skill where I'm not sure I would, I necessarily took the right skill, but I'll defend it, is Survivor. 10% lower speed for 10% increased weapon damage. Here's my defense of that. The things that are going to chase you down, are it's usually going to be the Rook, or it's going to be the Eiffel. And the Rook and the Eiffel can both dash, so you aren't going to be, I mean, you know, the Rook castles, and the Eiffel can dash. You aren't going to be able to get away from them with that 10% extra speed, so why not take the 10% damage? That's my thought process. And then I kind of blinked here, and instead of going for two repair amplifiers, I put on the quantum sensor, because I just ran into a lot more links than I ran into, like, rooks, <laughs> you know, titans that were going to do enough damage that the repair amplifiers were super useful. That partially might be an effect of just where we are in the season. And I, I was going to say, the, the results I got with this hangar, they're not as good as a meta hangar would be. You can do the math and figure that out for yourself. But I think I only got results this good because it's early in the season. And 
you're going to run into a lot more people who you wouldn't normally be facing. So I was running into a lot more people who were like mid or lower masters versus higher masters or champions. And it would be much tougher to have this kind of result later in the season, I think, personally. I, I, I didn't find this particularly easy to use at all. You know, you can do it. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is there's a conventional wisdom you see all the time on Reddit that the ultimate Fujin and the ultimate Fenrir are the good ones and everything else is bad, but Mender might be okay. I completely disagree with the ultimate Fujin. <laughs> I think that um, ultimate Fenrir with the new pilot, we can look at that, is a cut above. In fact, I have a skill eye on this I have to get rid of. I have explosive experts still. And I wanted to put the original weapons they were released with on each of these bots to give you sort of like the showroom effect of playing with it. But for both the Invader and the Fenrir, I would normally put Orkins on them. I, especially for the Invader, I much prefer Orkins. But anyway, the Fenrir, I was going to say, it is, it is scary durable. It's, it, it is actually scary how much damage you can take. And you're going to see a game on the carrier where it is standing up to four members of the other team. One of them is an Indra. And it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good fight. You're going to want to check it out. But the Fujin... I'm not sure what to say about the Fujin other than... No, I, I don't find it any better. I don't find it any better than, I mean, it's better than a regular Fujin, right? <laughs> I'll give you that. But I don't find the ultimate Fujin particularly better than the ultimate Ares or the ultimate Invader or any other ultimate bot. And I think the, the best comparison I could really give you is the ultimate Invader. These are the pilot skills in the Fujin, by the way. Uh, built for durability. So you've got a very durable Fujin and a very durable Invader. And they both have close range weapons on them. And the invader can jump to close distance between things and the Fujin can't. I just, I was never in a situation where I felt like, oh, I'm glad I'm in a Fujin and not the invader. Like I just couldn't, there was just no, like picture an invader, take away its movement ability and it's a Fujin. I mean, you give it a heavy, but like, I, I just didn't. So I, I don't know, maybe with a different weapon loadout, Maybe if I had like a Kestrel, so it was increasing in speed. But um, it's got two immune amps on it. So I, I didn't experience that, uh, that the Fujin was so much better. Speaking of ultimates, as you can imagine, I'm very excited for the news that there's going to be an ultimate Destrier. I think that the Destrier and I, it's always been my destiny. <laughs> to have an ultimate Destrier. I'd like to run a hanger of them. I don't even care what the stats are. It's not about that. There's something, there's something so satisfying about taking the starter bot and racking up kills with it in Champion League. So obviously with an ultimate, it's a little bit of a different proposition, but then it gets more like the revenge, you know? This is where it went to the mountain and trained with Ryu and came back to win the bot fighter tournament is the ultimate Destrier. So I'm excited. Uh... Yeah, you don't see the ultimate specter in here. Not for any particular reason, but the ultimate Ares is already pretty fragile. Like, I, I went with but robots that are going to be more durable because this is Champion League and you're going to take a lot of damage. And the specter can do amazing things, but it's really easy to get rid of. And... One of two things is going to be true. You're going to play it as it was intended on release, right? Where you're going to have that kind of duck hunting, lure them to the beacon and take out three bots, but then you're a sitting duck for whatever happens by. Or you're going to play it like a sniper and nobody wants that. <laughs> nobody wants to see the Weber, the Weber Spectre, uh, especially since I can't do it if I'm going to use the release weapons. I've got at least two of them max, maybe a third one. In fact, I... I, I was just flipping through before I so saw I've got another invader here that uh, I put it out here just so I could level a pilot because the invader pilot that's on the invader I'm using is the one that gives you 500% more damage. Yeah, there's the explosives expert because I really do like Orkin better on this bot. 500% more ability damage 
Well, the ability to damage is basically nothing, so five times nothing is nothing. Womp womp. So I might replace that with Adrian, because 5% to your weapons is going to be so much more useful than 500% of nothing. There's the modules there. But yeah, the reason why this second invader here is leveled to 12 and I stopped is because it was during... Sorry for that, I hit the keyboard. Um, it was during a leaderboard event. And one thing I've noticed about the leaderboard events where they want you to level bots and weapons, and tell me if this has been your experience or you've noticed something different. I feel like I get more bang for my buck leveling to 12 and stopping, or at least 2.1 and stopping, than leveling all the way to 3, like Mark 3. I think that the way they've, they've calculated the rewards you get, sure, you get fewer rewards leveling from 1 to 12, but it's so much cheaper to go from 1 to 12 than from 2.1 to 2.12 that you get more points in the leaderboard for the amount of silver you spend to level things to 12 and stop. So you tell me what your experience is, but in my experience, I have a much easier time filling out those leaderboards by stopping at either 1.12 or 2.1. Okay, one last thing I wanted to bring up before we get into the four games, and I promise you, each and every one of these bots will have some time in one of those four games at least. There were two mechanics in the game that I've been thinking about that could probably improve with a rework, and I wanted to get your thoughts on them. Am I crazy? Let me know what you think. The first, and the easier one to fix is Titan regen. The triple repair amp Titans are just killing me and everybody else, where if you don't have maxed, like absolutely maxed out Titans, multiple ones to shoot at them, you can't take them down. And invincible bots are basically no fun. Since you can't choose your teammates in, in solo queue, these are going to be invincible bots a lot of the time. My thought was just subject Titan regen at least to the diminishing returns of damage resistance. And you notice that like they dealt with the damage res resistance stacking by just making Titan weapons that are leveled, you know, ignore it. <laughs> so then like damage resistance on bots became like, it's, it, like, it's nice to a point. Well, I, I think if you have diminishing returns on Titan regen, you can, you can continue to stack it, but your bots will still be eventually killable I'm not saying, you know, in one salvo, but if you are, if you have more health after three tours of an Eiffel than you did at the beginning, there's a problem with the way regen is working. So that's the first thing. Second thing, which is much harder to fix, is phasing. I feel like phasing on bots has gotten kind of broken. And my example of, of that really would be, there's two things that come to mind. One is the Ophion, obviously, between the Absorber Shield and, like, stealth from motherships and the phasing, you would have like a one second window to take it down. Very annoying. And then, this is a bit of a deep cut, but I was thinking about the Lynx. Sorry, not the Lynx. The Orochi. I guess the Lynx too. But the Orochi, especially when they gave it the pilot with three charges, Bridget, um... It was messy because there were still a lot of lock-on weapons, especially for Titans. Titans didn't have guidance operator because there were no pilots at the time. And between three charges that would break your lock-on and a phase shift, you could have an Orochi be effectively unhittable by a Titan that has lock-on weapons. So there's just nothing you could do. It was like, it wasn't a bad matchup. It was like you had a 0% win chance. Unless the pilot just like got disconnected, that was it. Game over. But well, what do you do about that? I had two thoughts. Neither of them are great, but I wanted to see what people thought about it. Now, right now, bearing in mind that like the, the phase shift module is balanced by its long cooldown. So we might want to adjust the cooldown if we tried these things, but what if there was a mothership module that dragged people kicking and screaming back out of phasing? Or what if phasing brought everyone to the same phased plane so you could shoot people in phasing? Like, if you have a phase module, and someone phases in front of you, then you phase, and now you can just shoot them until they phase back to the other world. 
It might be interesting, and it might... I mean, you'd have to rebalance Angler around it, too, but... Uh, just a thought. Would also, like, really change Ravana play. <laughs> It'd be an interesting thing to try. I, it, it would require a lot more balancing, and it might break more things than it fixes. But it is just a thought. So, four games I want to show you. Let's get into them now. Okay, we're here in Yamantau. Apologize for my voice. Allergies are a little bit out of control. I take a minute to decide what to drop in here. I love Yamantau, but I'm used to having something with longer range on a tank. The longest range I have in the regular bots. 600 meter pulsars on the Ares. Ares is very squishy. Drop it in anyway. We're going to play this map, whether I like it or not. Never quit, never give up, never surrender. My plan now, though, is I'm going to walk over to the bridge and walk across it. The bridge will give me a little bit of cover, and I'll hopefully be able to shoot into center or towards their secondary or people coming to center. We'll see. So I'm just looking around here, seeing what I can deduce about their their uh, team. I see a muzzle flash telling me there's a crisis or something very much like a crisis up there. Coming around the shielding, I see the Erebus has got two DKs. Can't tell what the center weapon is. I start shooting at him. He starts shooting at me. He fires into my shield and the Ares ability, Retribution, takes him out. Korean lasers on the Emuji. Emuji gets blinded by something, probably my Seeker drone, and I take him out. And now I'm walking towards, I'm not in range of it, but I was firing at that crisis. And there's something else with Korean lasers shooting at me. Closer. I uh, put my ability up so that when he comes out of blindness, the crisis, he can't shoot at me. So going to my shield. I shoot a Mars a little bit, it crosses over. And now I've managed to get my Ares into kind of a rough position. It's a squishy bot, and I can't tell what's up there, so I can't just walk up there or I'll get taken out. But if I also go back, their secondary is going to shoot at me, so I'm kind of in this tunnel now for the moment, and once I get some backup. And the Mars managed to take him down. And I kind of want to see what's over there. I see something comes up in a shield, so I'm assuming Ophion at this point. And he's coming towards me. I want to back up to complicate his shooting at me. And I see another Ophion come up. We're getting a little bit of help here from a friendly Emuji shooting at their secondary with the rockets. Ophion lands, and I go in to put some damage on him. He slides out of the way. His friend comes in and goes back up in the air. And at this point, I'm like, all right, this is going nowhere. I'm dancing over here. I just walk in hoping I can take something out, and my dreams are shattered by the execute on the links. But hey, my Titan bar is charged. So let's drop in the longest range bot I have here. Ultimate Al Ming with the ultimate gendarmes. There's a Fafnir I'm shooting across the map at. He's in cover right now, but he's going to come out. Yep. And the Fafnir, easy target. Ophion over here gets caught up on some geometry, hanging there like a Christmas ornament, and Christmas is over. Let's see, Link's coming towards me. He's going to come to find out. I have a quantum sensor on this, as soon as he gets close enough, anyway. I'm still playing peekaboo. See that crisis over on the right is still just that crisis is going to shoot me so many times in this game. Lynx manages to get eventually taken out. His friend just seems to evaporate. Now we've got two Ophions here on the other side of the bridge, just sort of lazily hopping towards home because <laughs> their flight is so short now. A scorpion looks like scorpion hiding for the rampage, and I'm trying to find a way to get a shot or two on these guys because they are so annoying. I'll shoot into his uh, absorber there for a minute. That's not great. And get the assist. I'm blinded. I see we've got a couple guys in center now, right? A couple guys in center and a Lynx, so I feel, okay, that's not so bad. I see a Lynx coming here over the bridge. Managed to take him out for the godlike. Their enemy crisis gets some more shots onto me. <laughs> that crisis starting to annoy me. So I take that uh, Indra about halfway out as I float back, and I start to see... There's, like, a harpoon shooting me in the back here from center. More shots from that crisis. I'm, well, now i got to take out the scorpion before he becomes a problem. But I'm backing up to get a look, and the two bots in center both lost to the lynx. Okay. Let's shoot at this Seraph. That's a shame on me for assuming that a two-on-one situation might be one we could handle. Drift here to get rid of that Seraph. I'm trying to get to the lynx, but friendly bot does it for me. And uh, Indra and Aminos running towards center. 
That's the injury I took out halfway, took out the other half of the way. Minos now has got the bubble shotgun, so he's doing a bit of damage to me. I hit my repair. Something blinds me. Not sure what. So he goes into hiding. I drop my mute mothership on him. And I notice over to the left, something's coming towards our secondary. Don't know what just yet. I slide over to get the shot on the Minos Titan Slayer. And I see, hey, there's an Ocho Kochi sneaking up here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the old meta. So I shoot at him. I don't get the kill on that. It's a dot effect did it, and I'd like to complain about it, but having a uh, kill stolen a number of times in the past week, I have no more moral authority. Okay. Oof, there goes Titan Slayer on the Heimdall. Still can't reach that crisis. Let's see. Let's go towards center. What do we see? See a Ravana and a Kepri goes down. Ravana's gonna dance there for a minute as I finally get the Beyond Godlike taking out that crisis. That has been long coming, and and that, that felt good. In comes a Rook with an interesting build. Remember the player's name, too. Rook's hitting me with the blinding weapons. He manages to do it. I come back here and I drop. The drop is gonna do two things. Obviously, it'll get me slightly behind cover, but also, when I go up again, I get another four seconds of stealth, which will let me put some more damage onto him and my gendarmes will charge a bit while I do it, so... You can play this like a Miramitz if you want to. Uh, you know, there's reasons to do it or not do it. I think the downside is you're just spending so much less time putting damage down range. I don't know if the stealth is worth it. Managing to take that Indra almost all the way down. Getting hit. I didn't even notice it because my healing effect blocked it, but I was getting hit by the blinding weapons on that Rook again. But I hit him with the Mute as I went blind. And so, in blindness, he managed to get taken out by the team. Now there's four of us and none of them, so this is where... Remember that Rook player? Rook player drops in what I believe is a Prisma Behemoth. And decides he's going to shoot me with it, and I decide to return the favor. That's a kill. Same player, again, on their secondary. Here we go, drops in a Mars, and I can't tell what it has because there's so many weapon effects on it. There's a double kill. Now at this point, it's all over but the crying, and that same player, the <laughs> rogue player, uh, drops in a harpy, a weather chicken, and that's going to give me a triple kill. And I can tell I'm scraping my legs trying to get up this, <laughs> trying to get up this platform, and I also know it's not going to matter because that is going to be game. So let's check the scoreboard and see how we did. Eight point two, two assists, seventeen kills, and no beacons. Uh, I'm not proud of no beacons, but I have always said that if you're going to get no beacons, you should probably get seventeen kills. That's that's. I think I've, I've been. I've said that many times. Uh, I'm not mad at it. If I was on the other team, I'd be a little salty that I had four players getting no, getting no beacons, and none of them got seventeen kills. That would make me very toxic. But hey, not bad for a map I didn't want to play. Let's get into another game. Ah, we are here on the Dreadnought. Dreadnought, excellent map for both brawling and sniping. Gonna drop in the Ares first. I drop the Ares first a lot because it's very fragile and it's very slow, and it has a decent range. Well, if it's very fragile, you're not gonna want to drop it suddenly on a beacon and during beacon rush to defend it. If it's very slow, you're not gonna want to run beacons with it later in the game, so you're less likely to need it later in the game. And your best way to maximize its ability is to position it carefully where you have the fewest number of reds at the end of its range, so, Ares, a good first spot to drop. Shooting here into the secondary coming from center, I see we've got the enemy Nether, which I managed to get the kill on, a bit of a kill steal, that's okay. I think I'm going to take out this Lynx, and he manages to phase and back up. Good Lynx play. Meanwhile, his friend the Fafnir drops in. Shotguns take me out, and something shoots me from above. Interesting. Here comes the Rona Invader to punish that Fafnir for his insolence. Fafnir goes down. Uh, I try to drop the mute here on the Lynx, but I think the Lynx gets into stealth before I can. Something shoots me from above again. What? There's... There's a... There's a Fenrir on the roof. What is he shooting me with? Is that... 
Are those aphids? Is there a Fenrir on the roof shooting me with aphids? I don't know if I'm more offended that I got shot or offended by the build. Well, we've got enough people in center here and working on their Beacon D. Let's go contest their home beacon. I see a Decay Crisis backing up there. Father Time. And more getting shot from the roof, huh? Okay. Jump here onto their home, put some shots into Father Time, but the uh, the kill does not go to me. And I'm gonna go towards center. I'm very as slow as I am. Somebody's got to try to do something about that guy on the roof. And if I'm the only one who's interested in doing it, then it'll eventually be me. I can't believe I'm being shot. I really think those are aphids. I, I don't. What if if you know what that is and I'm wrong? Please let me know. Here we come into center. I see an Erebus and a Raven, friendly Typhon, and a shell runs in. A good melee Raven build. Typhon goes after him. I'm going to deal with a shell and try to get this beacon. The thing about if you're in a bot that relies on armor, running up on shotguns, I would just find somewhere else to be unless I really didn't want to be in this bot anymore. Because uh, those shotguns are just going to punish the armor so quickly. Here we have curiously brave Ophion. Maybe he'll get out of it, but no, he doesn't. And now I'm being shot by in in Ojun with an Avenger and a hammer. You know, it's it's early in the qualification season, so you're gonna see some uh, curious mismatches. And uh, I'm running beacons in an incredibly slow bot. I'm jumping beacons. I'm a beacon jumper now. There is that. Finally, <laughs> we get a teammate to take an interest in the rooftop there. And I'm slowly crawling my way back towards the other beacons. Hey, little action. Sonic Lynx picks a bad time to be out of his ability. Give me the triple kill. Now, I want to go to that second beacon there. That middle beacon that I'm walking towards. I wait to jump until I can maximize the parabola of the jump. So, like, I get as much air as possible, which gets me as close as I can. And a hammer Lynx drops in, which by itself would be okay, but he's also got a buddy here, the Brazon Lynx, that's two Lynxes with shotguns, four shotguns, and because of their ability, they technically only have to get me down to 25%, assuming they're Mark III. Plus the Kestrel drone on him to make sure it's as easy as possible. So, I don't love this matchup, and I really wish I had some help. Uh, plus, their stealth that I have no way of directly dealing with. Obviously, I can get in front of them and shoot the shotguns and it'll go well. And a Haichi drops in. And uh, humiliatingly enough, they don't even execute me. They just shoot me down. I, I got taken out by two links and a Haichi. Let's drop in the ultimate Ao Ming. Haichi dashes towards me courageously. Maybe too courageously, uh, but you know. Hey, man. Took out an ultimate invader. Respect. Ravana drops in. I'm trying to get to this Lynx. He goes into his ability, maybe not realizing that I have a quantum sensor, and maybe realizing this is, you know, it's a final, it's a last stand. This is what he can do. We're miss we're losing a lot of beacons here. And inconveniently, I fold up to drop down and change a thing, get held up by a Newton as I do it. And Father Time shows up again in a, in a, uh, in a Luchador. I get the Titan Slayer on the Newton, but the Luchador takes me out. And now we've gotten, what is it, we've got three beacons? No, we're, we're done, sorry, they've got three beacons. They're going to cap our home now. And we've got center. So time to run some beacons, and the fastest bot I have here is the ultimate mender with the flamethrowers, and it actually is a fairly speedy little bot. Kepri goes down. Now we've got to flip the beacon. And then we can head over to the, the next beacon. Little mender leg is... Put, 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 put. Actually, a tough little boy here because he's got repair amps. He's got the last stand from his drone. And in drops. It would be an interesting matchup if it was one-on-one. -on -one. I would love to see it. And Arthur. So you've got a Titan with his shield and a little mender with teeny tiny weapons that go through shields. As flamethrowers do. 
get blown back by the ability. Um, get the assist on the Arthur. Here comes a Ravana. Ravana slowed down by gravity amp and maybe by the slowdown on the flamethrowers a little bit. Get the double kill off of that. And run for their home. Put, 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 put. It does look like they're mecking, so hopefully we will uh, close this out shortly as we take the center beacon and can we get the five cap before time runs out? Only Father Time knows, and he's not here. Oh, we managed to just do it. Get the victory as the beacon bar expires. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. 6.93 assists, 10 kills, 7 beacons captured. That is a pretty good day for me. I mean, I don't normally... Normally I get more than 10 kills, but normally I get fewer than 7 beacons, uh, as we've seen. So I'll call that a decent combination. All right, let's get into another game. Okay, we're here in the valley, and I uh, put this game in. It's not a very high-scoring game. You're going to see it's very underwhelming. I drop in the Fujin, but I put it in because I hadn't used the Fujin in any of the other games. And the conventional wisdom is that is that Fujin and Fenrir are the best ultimate bots. And I think the conventional wisdom is a little off. Uh, you'll see the problem with the Fujin here. It's got great firepower, but it's very slow. And while it's strong, it's not particularly any stronger than the Invader. I think the Invader is tougher, and the Invader jumps. So, yeah. I, like, I, I don't dislike it, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't think that the Fujin is a remarkable ultimate. Or that it's any better than the other ultimates, put it that way. So we're a minute into the game, and I haven't killed anything yet, so I'm feeling very out of my element. I see we've got reds going to our secondary. I decide I'm going to go to their secondary. I fully expect, especially when you see, like, it's Beacon Rush. I'm going onto their beacon, and they had... There was one guy who wasn't a, who wasn't in the game before. I expect someone to drop in. Nobody drops in. And instead, I just get harassed from range by a lynx. Okay. Oh, no. He shot the first of my shields. How annoying. Uh, I think I can maybe get the kill on this Fafnir that I was shooting before. I don't. Okay. It's a minute and a half. I have no kills. I'm starting to get itchy. So I'm going to walk towards their home. At least I think of the top beacons here as the home. It's, it's a debatable proposition on this particular map. Shooting shotguns in the direction of the Ophion. Get my first kill for the day. And the angler comes in to blind me. I can't get off this beacon because I want to flip it. And I do flip it to, to white. So I've got to just eat the targeting malfunction, take my blindness. I see they have a blitz now, an angler, and a harpy shooting at me. So that's a lot. Uh, the blitz is in the worst shape for sure. When I can see again, there's my double kill. They have no beacons right now. It's a good team play from everyone. And that angler comes in for blindness spell number two. And once again, I've got to stay here because my teammate's almost dead. And if I want to flip this beacon, I've got to be here. So I flip the beacon and I eat the blindness again. And I'm in bad shape getting shot from their home. But I managed to get the triple kill and the rampage before I get taken out. So what do I drop? Why not the ultimate Al Ming with the ultimate John Darms? I can't do anything about the Ophion capping, but I can stop it from doing anything else afterwards. Another Ophion goes and... It's evaporated by a teammate. Let's see. They have a Miramitz, and I'm going to mute it. I don't feel bad about muting a blinding Miramitz. He deserves it. He's blinding other people. This is just justice. He manages to malfunction me. I get the assist when a teammate takes him out. I'm back up in the air now, though. Let's see. What do we got here? Ophion? Uh, I'll do some damage to it, but he gets into cover. And, ooh, I would like to shoot him, but... There is the Ghost of Christmas Past, the regular Ao Ming. Ugh. Christmas is over. Triple kill there on the Harpy. This Ophion, I shouldn't be shooting at it, but I just cannot wait for it to land. So I shoot into its Absorber, which I shouldn't do. It's bad form, but come on. Game's almost over. Let me have this one. Lynx comes towards me, finds out I've got a Quantum Radar, and something's shooting at me from the side that I'm not paying any attention to because I want that Lynx. And I see, oh, it's an Indra. I should have paid much more attention to that Indra. 
Still, we're down to what, about 20% of their beacon bar? They've got two, we've got two, and this is just defensive play. I'm gonna drop this Ares in the center, knowing that I don't have to take anything. I have to stop them from taking things, and I am just going to try to annoy and harass them. If I can draw this Indra towards this gate, then he's not gonna go mess up my friends on uh, the secondary beacons where it's easier for him to move around. So I get out there long enough to attract his fire, and then I can move back into cover. I can't do anything about that beacon without exposing myself to more of the Indra, so I'm just gonna move over here for a minute, Try to shoot and take out an Ares, a little cannibalism, or at least I get an assist on that. The Indra now has spent a whole bunch of time wasting, or wasting a whole bunch of time doing nothing constructive. I'm going to come back out here while I'm in cover. They can shoot into my absorber as I shoot them a little bit. Yeah, couldn't get into the sky fast enough. That looked like it was a specter, maybe? I might be wrong about that. And the beacon bar is almost gone. I will come out here. Drop the mute on the mirror mets and put some shots into the into the lark there. But the game ends. So yeah, the Fujin is it's it's slow and it's tough, but it's not any tougher than than an invader. So I I don't know. It's not bad. It's just fine. Five million damage. We got two assists, ten kills, two beacons captured. It's not a bad game. It's you know it's fine. Um, I I could see the Fujin. Really shining on a brawling map, but I don't know. If you have a better Fujin build than me, please let me know because I would certainly love to experience the joy other people experience with it. I just think it's fine. All right, let's get into one more game. Okay, Carrier. I hope you haven't uh, been exhausted by what you've seen so far because you're about to see some exhausting play. Excuse me while I have a bit of this beverage. I've been talking a lot. Okay, Ares slowly walking into the, towards the first beacon. Going to get a cap on that. I see my teammates are going towards our secondary. I'm going to fly out to the left, trying to get some shots into center. And when I see that they've got a lynx coming to center, although it's a melee lynx, now I've got two things to think about. I want to get close enough for my seeker drone so that I can see him within 350, but I don't want to be so close that he can melee me. And maintaining that distance, well, I'm trying to think of how to do that, he gets into cover. So <laughs> a lot of thought invested in nothing. Meanwhile, a melee Ochokochi also with some harpoons coming towards me. I can tell the Lynx is trying to go for our home. He wants to get underneath home and flip our home beacon and put us out of their misery quickly. So I drop down. It's not an ideal place for me because he's going to just go through my through my armor, but I can see him in his ability, so that's helpful for me. I start shooting into this Ocho who comes to back up his friend. The Ocho gets shot from above as well, and I get a double kill on that. That... Should have been a good matchup for him, but uh, what can I say? Clean living. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I'm going to try to go back to my original position and pressure that center, and if I can get a chance to get into it, I'll get into it. But they have a Fenrir there. It looks like Radiation and the Nebula drone. I try to drop a mute on him, and as I do, something runs underneath, and my targeting goes janky. Thanks, Pixonic, for that. So I missed the mute. And I see we've lost our secondary. These guys are playing very aggro. Try to come here to put some fire on the Mars and it phases. Oh, they gotta find a way to stop the phase. The phasing is out of control, this, this meta. So I've got now a Fenrir coming towards me and a Ravana. And the Ares cannot handle two bots shooting at it at once. And I'm gone. But there is a bot that can handle two bots shooting at it at once. We're getting both our primary and secondary contested. Ultimate Fenrir comes in to see the ghost of his former self. And <laughs> Ravana starts, I drop a mute on the Fenrir. Ravana starts dancing around me. It's like, I'm going to phase, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dance. And I'm just like, ha ha. You know, Punishers go brrrr. <laughs> Double kill there. Meanwhile, the Kepri has been bobbing in and out, decides he doesn't really want this smoke right now. Let's flip this beacon. Seraph shoots at me, but something takes it out. Thanks for the fire support team. And I'm here, I'm going to go chase down that Kepri, and I'm getting shot from behind. I realize, well, there's a Demeter on below and a, and a Curie on top. How many of them are over here? It's like, I see we've got three guys on home. Does somebody want to dance on the secondary with me a little bit? Demeter goes down, thankfully. Drop a mute on the Curie. So the Curie phases, which, okay. No, <laughs> now we can do this. Is it was this better? Just 
chance for me to get my weapons to reload. And... Oh, they got a Lynx too! So, get the assist there on the Curie. The Rampage on the Lynx, and they have an Indra! Fantastic. This is about to be a bit of an antisocial situation, I can tell. So the Bubble Indra is phasing and dancing. I get ready to unload my Avengers into it, and oh, there we have it. Yeah. The friendly Demeter, the, I should say the enemy Demeter, teleports in front of the Indra to protect him. His name is Goofy, bruh, but he's playing very smart. It annoys me. Sonic Angler comes in, and he phases. I can't get off the beacon because I don't want to lose it. So now there's a Demeter and an Indra and an Angler, and I'm blind. See an Aumink? Oh yeah, a Typhon. Yeah, come on in. I was worried that these guys didn't have any help, so you should definitely shoot at me as well, Typhon. At this point, uh, I I'm getting a little salty. <laughs> so finally, we get into a situation where I can put enough bullets into the Indra, I get the Titan Slayer. And I want to take care of the people who are shooting at, at me and helping that Indra. So, we have a Demeter and a Typhon. And I'm just going to walk back towards them. And the Typhon decides he's going to stop and shoot at me, and the Demeter decides I don't want to be part of this situation anymore. Typhon very quickly evaporates. Uh, I see a Harpy. And as I'm getting onto center, there's an Aoming. <laughs> the Demeter is here with no Aoming or other friends to help him. Goes into his ability. As the Luchador jumps in. Of course, I was just thinking. I haven't seen a Titan for so long. I really hope there's a giant Titan to, to fight me. Finally, the Demeter goes down for the triple kill. Mute on the Luchador. Still getting shot by that Harpy. It feels like I... Is it just me, or am, am I facing a lot of resistance? Newton lifts and takes out the Luchador. I get the assist on that. A second Indra comes in. You know, I don't want to frighten you, but... I took out something that looked just like you, like, two minutes ago. I see the, there's a Lynx, uh, enemy Lynx on the left, but I can't do anything about that right now. Newton brings up the Indra, who goes into its stealth ability. And what am I taking fire from? Oh, I see. Sure, absolutely. Aminos. Aminos is going to run in, too. Why not? And an enemy Curie. I, 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 am I taking a lot of fire, or is it my imagination? That's okay. I have a Titan as well. Ultimate Aming with the ultimate gendarmes comes in. Indra phases a bit, but there's not a whole lot I can do about this. It's going to go down. So, I see the enemy Curie now is going to go... Try to take our secondary. There's Typhon, a uh, friendly Typhon up top. I drop down so I can try to flip the center beacon. But I'm looking now at the beacon bar, and this isn't good. We looks like we have a beacon disadvantage. We have a giant bar disadvantage. The game's almost over. So I'm just going to flip this beacon, you know, for honor, because never give up, never surrender. Back in the air, and I am shooting this Curie as it runs down towards their secondary, which a friendly player has flipped. Good job. I drop down because I need to stand on that beacon if I can, but I get my legs locked there for a minute by the Mars. I manage to get on the beacon while it's white, so we don't have it, but neither does he. And I start to see, hmm, it's four on six now, as I shoot that carry for the double kill. If I can stop them from taking this beacon, if I can stop the Curie from taking this beacon, and we can get those other two beacons. Maybe, maybe. It's unlikely. I, I don't expect to win. I'm just thinking maybe, maybe. It could happen. That Mars goes down, and I really want to see that Mars gone. And the Curie apparently does not understand that when this bot is on the ground with its legendary pilot, I have 400 defense points. Shoot at me all you want, <laughs> you know, unless you've got a weapon that bypasses a damage mitigation. So as I'm doing this, I see, oh, friendly Rook lands on their home. I managed to get the triple kill on the Typhon. And now, check out the beacon bar. They have no beacons. They have two players left, <laughs> but they have no beacons. And if they have no beacons, we don't lose any beacon bar. Which means, as long as this is the situation, this game can go on as long as it needs to. The Curie backs up, and I manage to say, okay, I can drop down again if I need to. I mute the Curie, and finally, can punish it for its insolence. There's the Rampage. And unless they can get a beacon very quickly, 
This is it. Now I see they drop someone in as I'm dropping down. I'm trying to target it, but the targeting system won't let me. I see it's an Indra. Only after time is up. Let's check the scoreboard. As I catch my breath from that one. Pretty intense. Would you agree that was intense? I would say that was intense. Three assists, 13 kills, seven beacons, which is a lot for me, as you know. That was an intense game. I think we should have the lineup take a bow. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the ultimate hangar here. Good job, all of you. And I want to say good job to all of you for making it here to the end of this video. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. It certainly helps the algorithm. If you are a dog or cat at home alone, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty and your parents are going to bring you a treat as soon as they get back, which will be really soon. And I will talk to you again really soon. Later.